Over the last month, I've been collecting case studies on passive solar greenhouses, and it has been so insightful. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my biggest insights from visiting a passive solar greenhouse in Canmore, Alberta, which is built out of straw bales. For a long time, I didn't think that straw bales would be a really great building material for passive solar greenhouses, and here's why. Straw bales are a carbon-based material. They will rot if they get wet. And, and so, you know, in my mind, thinking about having a wall system built out of these bales containing garden beds that are going to be watered on a regular basis with plants that are going to photosynthesize and evapotranspire. Um, in my mind, I was thinking that these bales would um, slowly absorb moisture and would, would have toxic mold in them and not necessarily be a great building product for a passive solar greenhouse. But I have to tell you that I've been completely wrong. Recently, I visited a passive solar greenhouse in Canmore, Alberta, run by Alpine Edibles and Christian Wright and, and some of his colleagues. And I was completely blown away by this greenhouse. When I walked into the greenhouse, what I was shocked by, it was pretty warm outside, just like it is today, probably over 30 degrees Celsius. And typically when it's this hot outside and we've got pretty full sun, um, you expect to walk into a passive solar greenhouse and get blasted by heat, like 40, 45 degrees Celsius sort of thing. Um, it's really difficult to manage heat in a passive solar greenhouse. But when I walked into this greenhouse, it actually got cooler. In other words, the greenhouse was cooler than it was outside. And the reason for this was the straw bales. So straw bales themselves have an enormous amount of thermal mass, but the render on the outside of the straw bale has a lot of thermal mass as well. And so these straw bales have been just an incredible building material to manage the thermal dynamics of the greenhouse. So number one, they have a really high R value. Number two, the bale and render itself acts as thermal mass. The render itself on the outside is painted white or it has a white um, wash on it, so it's reflecting light. And you know, I was actually really enjoying my time in this passive solar greenhouse because the, the lumpiness of straw bale building um, gives it a really natural and homey feeling. And so going forward, um, straw is definitely going to be on my list of materials to use for a passive solar greenhouse. So if you're considering building a passive solar greenhouse, check this out. This might be a good material depending on the type of ecosystem you live on and whether this material is readily available for you. If you're interested in seeing the case study, check the link in the show notes below. We've collected all of these case studies that I've done over the last two years into a package so that you can watch all of them. If you're not sure if a passive solar greenhouse is a fit for you, this is a great place to start because it's going to give you an idea of various types of greenhouses from inexpensive to expensive ones, from geodomes to square passive solar greenhouses. We've put a lot of effort into these case studies and you're going to get a ton of information about different technologies, ways of storing heat, different glazing options, how to monetize these greenhouses, and I think you're going to get a ton of value out of it. So I'll leave a link to that in the show notes below. If you have any questions or comments about passive solar greenhouses or using straw bales in passive solar greenhouses, leave it in the comments below. If you found this useful, hit the like button for me and you can subscribe to my channel if you're interested in hearing more about passive solar greenhouses and other permaculture related items. Thanks so much guys. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.